Hello students and welcome to this video for Excel chapter 3 mid-level exercise number one. We're going to be turning on our textbooks to page 591, page 591, and I'll read the information here as you turn there in your textbook. As an analyst for an airline industry, you track the number of passengers at the top five major U.S. airports, Atlanta, Chicago, Los Angeles, Dallas, Fort Worth, and Denver. You research passenger data at this a certain website and one worksheet you created lists the number of total yearly passengers at the top five airports for a six-year period to prepare for an upcoming meeting you need to create a clustered column chart to compare the pa number of passengers at each airport next you create a bar chart to compare the passenger count for the latest year of data available and then emphasize the airport or excuse me and then you Oh yeah, available, and then emphasize the airport with the largest number of passenger traffic. Finally, you want to insert spark lines to visually represent trends in passengers at each airport over the six-year period. You can then refer to the spark lines and clustered column chart to write a paragraph analyzing the trends to detect. So step A, it tells us to open up this file that I'm pointing to here, Excel 3M1, and we're going to save it, adding our name to that. So save as, choosing browse. I'm making sure I'm saving it to the right folder, which is your flash drive. For me, it's a different folder. And please be careful that you do take the time to save it to the right spot at the beginning. If you go and save it to the wrong spot and then switch it halfway through the process, there's a chance that you're going to lose your file and get it switched up with something else. So when you go to submit it, it'll turn out wrong. You don't want that. So choose the right place at the beginning. It says create a clustered column chart for range A4 through G9. So I'm going to select A4 through G9. Right here you can see it looks like this. Double check that you select the right information as well. Um, if your chart doesn't turn out the right way, you need to double check that first before asking the teacher for help because you easily could have gotten the wrong information. So A4 through G9, we're going to create a clustered car, uh, chart. So I go to insert. And we go to uh, clustered column chart. So this is my, or you know, we actually hover over this. I forgot. We click the data analysis button. We choose charts, and then right here, clustered column chart. I click on that. It comes up like this, and it says position the resize the chart to fit ranges A15 through G. 34. So some of you are still having some issues with this. All you got to do is move to the blank chart area and you click and drag it to where you want it to go. So I said um, A15, so I need to bring this over here. I just line it up with cell A15 as close as I can and then um, expand it to where I needed to have it go. So this is G34 it's supposed to go to. So I've got it lined up with 34 and I got to get the column G. So A15 to G34. So just get as close as possible to it um, there if you need to zoom in. All right, it says we're going to customize the chart by doing the following. So I'm going to move down a little bit here so we can see the whole chart. Swap the data on the category axis and in the legend. So we need to swap the category, the information um, here. So. What we can do is you'll notice, let me show you that again, I went a little faster. I right click here on the numbers in the uh, over here in the axis, the value axis, and I have here reset to match style, change tar chart type, select data. Click on select data, and then you have the option here, this middle button to switch row and column. So that's what it's talking about with switching values. I click on that button, and you notice it switched for me just like that and I can click OK. And then uh, it says here step uh, apply style 6 chart style. So style 6, I'm actually going to remove my magnifier here for a second because uh, I tend to click the wrong thing um, or have a better chance of clicking the wrong thing when I look at it with the magnifier on. So for me it's this one right here. Make sure you double check the screen sh uh, tip should st uh, say to you style 6. So I click on that. I'll bring my magnifier back up. Then it says select color 12 in the monochromatic section of the change colors gallery. So over here change colors. 
and then color 12 in the monochromatic section. So this is color one, two, th I'm assuming, I gotta scroll down a ways. That's color 13, and this is color 12. So second from the bottom, it looks like, from the monochromatic section. Then it says apply a light gradient accent one preset gradient fill to the chart area. So I'm gonna click on the chart area. I'm actually just gonna click here on my chart styles button. And let's see here. Oh, you know, I may need to do. I guess let's go to. There's a few ways you can do it here. <laughs> let's try here the shape fill. We have gradient. And that says light gradient accent one. Or let's use more gradients. There we go, format chart area, that's what I was looking for. Um, so we're gonna choose gradient fill, and then we're gonna go down here to our preset gradients, there it is, and light gradient accent one. So I'm gonna get rid of my magnifier again. So that's accent five. So light gradient accent one um, here. And there you go. I mean, we could have done format chart area as well to bring it up, um, but that'll work. That says change the fill color of the 2013 data series. So it's this one right here. 2013 data series is the darkest one. And it says change it to dark blue. So let's go to um, solid fill, and of course color. And this one is blue accent five. It's accent one, so blue accent five. And then lighter series. This is darker 50% instead of 60, and that's fine. Um, so just select that. You'll notice I don't have the magnifier on it just because it's too hard to see it. So you may have to zoom in and out here um, in order to do that. Use help. So up here is the help section. And it says add a solid blue border around the legend. So I'm just gonna try border legend. So here we go. And then select blue, it looks like for my preset. So I just typed in border and legend and came up with the first option. Hover over the arrow, change it like that. Then step D, it says type passengers by top US airports as the chart title. So um, I'll click up here. Passengers by top u.s.airports. dot airports. And I push enter and change the font color to blue. So I'm gonna go to home tab, click the font color arrow, and then I'm going down to standard colors and choosing blue. All right, then what I'm gonna do, I'll bring my main fire back up. If we don't have too many things to change here that I can't see. It says change the display units to millions for the value axis. So I click on this here, I right click, and I wanna format it. So format axis. I have to right click on the numbers. If you do it outside of the numbers, it will not work properly. So make sure you're actually right clicking in the right spot. I'm very specific here in the video to help you. Um, so please follow the instructions there. So change the display unit course to millions display units over here it says none we're going to switch that to millions so display units uh, and then it says edit the access title to display millions of passengers it's over here already I'm going to click on it millions of passengers enter oh there we go and it should look like this then it says display data labels above the columns for the 2013 series data or data series only. So data series only. So let me find that 2013 of course is the darkest one so I'm going to click on that. 
And then I can do chart elements up here. Click on data labels. And that way we have it. I do realize that I skipped a step here um, that we need to go back to. They kind of put two steps in one. We were supposed to change the fill color of the 2008 data series. So this is the lightest one here. So I'm going to click on that. We're supposed to change it to dark, uh, to blue, accent 5, lighter, 60%. So I'm actually going to click on the fill bucket here. Of course, choose solid fill and then change the color. And it's this one right here. So darker 50% is fine as opposed to the darker 60%. All right, then step G, it says create a clustered bar chart for the range A5 through A9. So let me do that. So let's click outside the chart here. So A5 through A9. And hold on control, because we've got to select G5 through G9. Make sure you look to see here that you selected the right things before you go and actually create it. I'm going to hover over the information I selected. Or, you know, let's just do it this way. Insert and clustered column chart should come up here. Well, let's try it again this way. So I hover, select this A5 through A9. being a little picky here with me tonight. So I'm going to try this one right here. I'm just going to do more because it's not giving me the data analysis like it should. And of course bar chart, so let's click on bar. And then here's clustered bar chart right here. So I may have been looking here in the wrong spot, but that'll work, the first option. And that says do the following, move the bar chart to a chart sheet named bar chart. So we are gonna move it. So I'm gonna click here on it. You see my chart tools come up by my design button. And in the design one is the move chart location. We're gonna click on that. We're choosing new sheet. And then of course we name it what we were told in the book, bar chart. And I press enter. It's gonna go here to another worksheet. And that says enter passengers at top five US airports in 2013 as the chart title. Oh, let me fix that. Remember to be looking over your words as you're typing them. Make sure you put in the right things. You may need to do a spell check at the end. Then it says apply style three chart style. So this is one, two, and it says style three. Let me double check and push the more button to make sure. Um, it should be the correct one right here. Then it says change the font color to dark blue on the chart title. So I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna click here. I just click on the outer edge, I go to home tab, and of course choosing the font color um, to dark blue. So I go to standard colors, select dark blue from here. It also says I need to do it to the category axis, the category axis, which is down here. So I do the same thing. I'm just going to click on the button. And then it also says the value axis, which the value axis is over here to the left. I click on it, change the font just like that. Then it says format the Atlanta data point. So I'm my Atlanta right here. I click on that. Um, with dark blue fill color. So I actually need to click on it one more time by itself. You see it's now just it selected. I click the solid fill button up here, my format data point task pane. If you went and got rid of this by accident, just right click on it and choose format. Um, and of course I'm choosing dark blue color fill. So I'm going down here, right there. Then step H, it says display the passenger worksheet. So we go down here, click on that. It says click and insert line spark lines in range H5 through H9 to illustrate the data in B5 through G9. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select B5 through G9 because this is the data we're going to start working with. I click on my insert tab 
And I'm gonna go over to the spark lines group. So I've selected the right cells, B5 through G9, and then I'm gonna click um, for spark lines, I'm gonna choose line, and then you can see here, data range is what it's supposed to be because we selected it. And then for the location range, we need to type in H5 colon H9. And then I push enter. And then of course, this should represent the yearly data for each airport. Then it says we're going to customize the spark lines by doing the following. Show the high and low points in the spark line. So up here in my show group, I can click high point, low point, and it's changed it as you can see. Then it says apply black text one color to the high point marker in each spark line. So in order to do that, I mean here's our spark line color, but we want the point and make sure I have the right thing here. Let's say that's not what I want. Oh. oh, here we go. I'm clicking on all the wrong buttons here. Uh, click on marker color, and then of course for, uh, it says here the high point marker, let's go down to that. We choose the black color. I can tell it's getting later um, in the evening here. The black color for that one, and then for the low point, we're choosing dark red color. So now it looks like this. It says click in cell 836. So I'm going to have to scroll down a little bit. Click in cell 836. So it looks like they made some changes to it here in the file. And it says compose a paragraph that analyzes the trends depicted by the airport spark lines. Notice the overall trends in decrease and increase number of passengers and any unusual activity for the airport. So you can see here our trends. Um, here and of course spell check the worksheet and correct for any errors so I want you to do actually look at that information that's going to be part of this and down here you need to put a paragraph so you're comparing the information and you can read it in your book again um, what it's asking for or go back and watch this video once you're done typing in the answer for this you do need to spell check your worksheet that's F7 and of course correct any errors and then um, what I'm going to do is for my passenger worksheet. So this is the part where um, figure out your questions and then come to this next step here. Um, I need to change the margins, so I'm going to click on page layout. I'm going to choose margins, and then I'm choosing custom margins because it says left and right should be 0.2. Oh, you may have to type it in. And of course, scale to fit for the first page. So I'm going to click print preview. Um, and over here in no scaling, fit sheet on one page. And then we can click the back arrow. And then of course, it says insert a footer. So I go to the page setup group. Um, but it does say, hang on a second, for all worksheets. So let's group our two worksheets together. I hold down control and click on bar chart. You see they're grouped. And now I go up here to the page setup dialog box launcher. I choose header and footer, custom footer, and then I'm putting in my left side my name. And then in the center, I do want sheet name, and then of course the right side file name. So you do want to make sure um, you group both of them together first and then put those things in. I click OK. I click OK again. And that, uh, of course, here is how you complete Excel. Chapter three, mid-level exercise number one. Let me show you here very quickly the information in case you needed to see it again. Um, this is kind of what it should look like. And of course you have your answer down here. And then bar chart here um, should look like this. Make sure you double check with your answer as well. Remember the spell check part and all those things. Um, good job following along with the instructions and make sure you submit it the way you've been told.